Hey guys, welcome back. You know, today we got just a couple things to take care of. First, we're gonna finish the Master Sword because I know it's bothered some of you that it was never actually finished. So we're gonna paint the blade and add the strapping on the uh, handle because I found something that'll work. Also, we have to pick a winner for this uh, last giveaway. The Sours Veneers Wood ID Kit is the um, prize there. But uh, there's some great entries, guys. You guys, that was awesome. So thanks for sending all those in and I'm excited to go through those. Here is, in case you're wondering, this uh, laser cutter slash burner. This is taking me forever to figure it out and I narrowed it down finally. It's the operating system. I'm running Windows Vista. That's an old PC, I never use it. And so I guess I have to buy a new OS. And I didn't really want to do that because I really don't use that PC. I don't know how all that works. So once I figure out the OS thing, this will be up and running and it should really help in the project. So. Uh, let's get going on the handle and then we'll jump back and go through the entries. All right, before we start, I got to thank a couple of viewers, uh, Skylar Babcock and Brian Nance. Skylar sent some high res images he found online of the Master Sword. And what I like is they really show the grip um, really well in super detail. You get to see the texture exactly how it's done. So if you look, it's four strips. They start at the top, they crisscross, and they meet at the bottom. Um, so that's really helpful. Also helpful was um, Brian's suggestion of this. This is called Overgrip and um, both of them made a sword. We'll show those at the uh, end of the video. I'll show some pictures but he saw somebody on Instructables use this and this is what you would wrap on the handle of a tennis racket. So what I like about it is it really should work perfectly for this because it's a handle. It's, it's the original purpose of this so I'm expecting uh, good results with that. I just wrapped a shoelace, happens to be green, around the handle uh, just to get an idea of the length of how much material we need. So again, that's four pieces. You know, they start here and then the other side starts there and they go around crisscross. Um, the image Skylar sent, I think it crisscrossed six times or something like that. I'm going to go, this is my son's Hyrule Historia book. He, he just bought it. He really likes it. It's a cool book. On this sword, it's a little bit thicker of strips there and they cross about five times, I think. So that's the one I'm gonna do. Um, after that, we're gonna paint this um, silver and we should be done. And this will be exciting, so let's get going. That was pretty difficult. Uh, I had to unwrap it and wrap it several times, but what ended up helping was you measure the distance that you have to do, divide it into quarters. So put a little mark there, there, and there. That way when you're wrapping, you know you have to overlap in those spots. And keeping all of these, you know, symmetrical is really hard. Um, I'm not super happy with the quality of this. It's not as adhesive for one as I'd like. I, I thought it'd be more like a sticker. It is sticking pretty good. I'm gonna put some super glue on it. Um, what else? So, if it was thicker, that'd be great. Thicker and a little bit more muted green, but you know, I, there's no real other option for now. So, so far, this is the best option. If you guys find one that's better, uh, that you like better, a material that we could use, please let me know and we'll use it on the next sword we make. But uh, I'm just gonna glue this down and then we'll paint it. Well, it always feels just a little bit like Christmas when you uh, 
get to take the paint or the uh, paper off of everything. So let's uh, see how this looks now. I used, um, in case you're wondering what kind of paint, this is super chrome. Um, but I think any kind of chrome would look good. So I'm not sold on the green striping. It looks a little bit like frog tape to me, but it's pretty good. It feels really good. Um, but I think that the colors need to be a little uh, more muted. Uh, maybe it would be better if the blue here was actually more purple. It would look closer, but uh, I'll keep looking. Right now it's the best that, uh, that I found so far for this. All right, well, here it is. Here's a little bit of a close-up for you. You know, it came out pretty good in the end. I didn't plan on putting this much detail into it. I was actually going to make something that my kids could use for sword fights, but uh, I think there's too many hours to let them have sword fights in with this one. But I think we'll do also a few more Master Swords and uh, try things that we haven't done uh, before, make things a little bit better. You know, this is still kind of simplified, and I did alter it a bit for the, um, the fact that we made it out of wood and I wanted it to be strong. Like this should be thinner here, but uh, if I made it too thin, I didn't want it to break off, but you know, good enough for now. So let me know what you guys think. And definitely if you try it and you find tools and tricks and things that would help, then uh, let me know, like the, uh, the green webbing. Now, or I keep calling it webbing, strapping, you know, the tennis handle stuff. Um, if there's gotta be something better for that. Uh, if you compare it to you know, the Nintendo artwork photo, that actually was made by Nintendo. And that's the standard. And so I gotta find some sort of uh, green wrap that will work. But yeah, until then, this is as close as I could find. So let's pick a winner for the giveaway. Um, let's go through these. Now this was, again, donated by Sours Veneers. And this is the wood that I use to, um, I use their veneers to make the rings. So we're gonna have to do this a little bit quick because there's so many of them and this video would be super long. But uh, 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 there's some great entries, guys. So let's start with um, uh, the two I mentioned before. This is uh, Skylar Babcock. He finally finished his master sword here. He just used a saw and a knife. That's all he had. And it was his first time carving anything. So what great work, man. That's a first time. And thanks for sending it in. Um, this is from Brian Nance, and he said he found the channel after he already started his sword, but you can check out the detail on that. He said, well, I started with a guy's drawings on instructables.com, but uh, he said he bit off more than he can chew, so he wanted, decided to shelve it for a while. Then he came across this channel and decided to finish it up, and I'm glad you did. Now you just have to put on the strapping, again, the, the handle um, strap. So if you find something really good, I think this could be better. It works and it might be great for some swords, but I, there's got to be something, maybe a little muted green and uh, also a little thicker if you want it to look just like what the uh, Master Sword should. Uh, unfortunately, some of you sent uh, a couple, Jared Ellis and Connie Berg. Your links didn't work to um, entries that you sent. So I'll still enter you guys, but when I clicked it, it there's something wrong with the link. So maybe you guys want to try and send that again. I sent an email, but didn't hear back. So. This one's from Trey Ramsey. He says he made a project from the King of Randoms uh, YouTube channel. This is a little crossbow that shoots matches or toothpicks. And I think, I think I've seen that video. I think they are actually on fire when he shoots them. So, uh, but you said you also have a Facebook page. So also anybody who wants to um, promote their stuff, if you guys sent an entry, Send me the link of whatever, your YouTube page or your um, Facebook page, your Etsy page. Just send me one link and I'll put it in the video description and uh, people can check out more of your stuff. So if you want, um, Trey, if you want to send your Facebook um, link there, I'll put that in the video description so people can check out your work. If you guys want, if you don't, if you want to uh, rename, remain a little bit reclusive, you can do that too. Um, this one is from Huerto Pitts from Mexico City. He says he's 16 and he doesn't have all the tools, um, but he does have basic tools. And so here's what he made, master sword and a shield. And again, you can see a lot of you have wondered how to do it without a lathe. 
you just cut it out and, and uh, round the handle by hand. It's possible, totally possible. And we'll do it sometime in the future. I'll make one without a lathe. Um, and I wish I could spend more time on all these, but it, there's a huge stack here. This one's from Sean Needham, and he's from Australia. He says he made this wooden sword with all hand tools, no power tools, and he said it took forever, but uh, I think that looks great. I just love the grain. You don't paint that when it looks that nice like that. Great job, you know. Um, I'd like to try one out of different woods just to see how it works. I use pine, a lightweight pine. That way it's not so heavy when my kids are swinging it around, they're not gonna damage as much, but it's super soft, and so it wears down a, a bit quicker. But thanks for sh uh, sharing that, Sean. Um, this one's from, sorry about the names, Henri Lees, Bellowers from the Netherlands, and she made a box to keep her earbuds in. She's 16 years old as well. She used beech wood for this, and it keeps uh, closed with a magnet. You made it from salvaged wood from stirring sticks, so that's gotta be pretty small. But uh, yeah, I'm wondering how big that is. So thanks for sending that one in. This one is from Brendan Baker. All right, so he made a full set. He's ready to go to battle. Sword, scabbard, shield, and uh, paper mache. Hot glue, paper mache, made it all yourself. I love it. Good job, Brendan. Thanks for sending that in. He used an old belt for the scabbard. He should have been modeling it. That would have been fun to see. Okay, uh, this one is from Brooke Lewis. My husband and I have pretty easy access to pallets, so we make random things out of them. This is a storage ottoman for storing board games. And I like that it still looks like a pallet. And uh, what a great place to put your games, right there on the ottoman, because that's where you're gonna want them. That's where you guys will probably be playing a lot of them. So thanks for sending that. I really like that idea. Uh, this one's from Jimmy Clob. He makes cakes. And, and I don't know my cakes. He says, this one's, the flowers are made from gum paste. So if you guys are, you know, bake, you might know what this stuff is. This one uh, is made from all royal icing. And this one is made, the bunny is made out of fondant, roses out of gum paste, and the rest is out of royal icing. I didn't make the jelly beans or the chocolate bunnies. So great job, man. I love that. That'd be fun to do something like that. I made a cake once. Once it turned out great. Every time after that, terrible. Um, this one's from Alan Blair. He made a few things. Uh, this one he's really happy with. He said, a, a paracord belt with an emergency pack in the buckle. So that's got all your supplies in there. That's really neat. I know Bear Grylls uses that stuff all the time. Uh, let's see. And then 3D photos. And he's got all the info on his instructable site. And then he's also made necklaces with wrapped stones. Great job, man. That's uh, fun stuff. He's got an Etsy shop as well. So I'll probably put the link in there. This one's from... Lucy Cox from the UK and she made coasters with pages from Harry Potter books on them and she used plain white tiles, cork underneath so it wouldn't scratch up her table and uh, PVA glue and an acrylic top coat and that looks really cool. My son would like that but I don't think he would dare rip up his books. <laughs> so he must have had one that was already garbage but she's also reupholstered some chairs as well. She's proud of those and I see down here you have your own YouTube channel you started. Congratulations on that. I'll put the link in uh, in the description so people can check you out. But thanks for sending that. I think it looks really good. Great job. And she sent full directions and uh, maybe we'll do that one time or she'll do it on her channel. Let's see. Uh, this is from Michelle Patterson from Australia. She sent in a few things. First was a box she made in university for a tech class. Um, and then another thing she made, let's see. Secondary Design and Technology Center. Oh, she's studying to become a teacher. Well, that's cool. She's going to teach woodwork, metalwork, and CAD. Great. And here's a, a project. Let's see. An object that represents and informs about a floor and a garden. So she made Tasmanian blue gum with 22 gauge steel wire and mounted on a red gum base. That looks really cool. That's pretty. I like it. But uh, also she made some wood rings. Had a couple questions, so I'm going to answer those real quick. Um, let's see, most of these would splinter to some degree or another while you're trying to roll. Yep, it happens. So when you cut it, make it a bit bigger than the ring you want to make because the ends might splinter a bit. And even if it does, you can kind of glue it back down. So not a big deal. Um, let's see. Uh, also, are the wood supposed to leave a, behind a pulp and stain the water? Yeah, it's really weird when you boil it. 
um, chemicals will leach out in the water and turn it different colors, like really weird colors. So, you know, not even the color of the wood. But uh, yeah, totally normal. So thanks for sending that in. This one is from Max Master, let's see if I can say this, Eins, zwei Eins from Germany. And uh, what a name, Max Master. So he made a Wind Waker shield, sword, and uh, something he calls a Monado. I don't know what that is, I'll have to look that up. And uh, let's see, so he made his from plywood, his sword and his shield, and cardboard and putty for the guard of the sword. I like that, man. Great job. Uh, I feel sorry if my English isn't the best, but I hope you can understand. You have great, great English. A lot of you guys, you know, worry that I can't read what you write, but it's great, man. I wish I knew another language. Um, let's see, this one's from Angel. Let's see, oh, she made these magic wands. Cool job. Wands and roses were made out of three quarter inch pine dowel. I did not have a lathe, so I sanded the shape with a belt sander and slowly carved away till the design came out. Neat, neat, neat. I see you got a crystal at the end of that one. And check out the rose. She just carved up a little piece of wood there. Beautiful. She apologized because she didn't keep those, so she didn't have better pictures to send. But uh, I really like those. And I know um, Javier wanted me to make a, a wand. Maybe we will sometime. Hopefully to, uh, soon. And this is from Ted. Remember Ted, he showed us uh, how to make the rings. He says, hey Adam, it's Ted again. He made his latest creation, a proto saber from old tales of the Jedi comics. You know, that almost looks photoshopped. <laughs> but I, I see the glow on your face. I believe you. He says he, it's mainly made out of PVC wood and recycled polycarbonate and acrylic sheets. And you tell me all that and I still don't know how you did it, but man, you got a whole prop shop down there. That is awesome. The grips are done in wood veneer. Man, that's beautiful. Look at that. Good job. Thanks for sharing. This is from Epic Rao. Um, you see, I know you messaged before. He says, I am 12. He made these, he's got a couple things. He made these wooden swords. Nice. And also, here's the new one he did for himself uh, with his dad. Uh, lightsaber and he said his dad found a sink drain pipe and it looked like a lightsaber hilt so they went for it and the blade is made out of PVC so there they are having a sword fight with a little Photoshop work good job man this one is from Jesse Moran he says I made this years ago with my late grandfather that got me into woodworking it's basic but it keeps memories of him with me when I was a little boy I could use something like that put my boys in time out on makes them sit close to each other huh and congratulations you mentioned your wife is pregnant uh, congratulations on that um, this one is from Glenn Gretzky and he made everything here you can see this is his cubicle at work he made his own shelving unit and then he made each one of these figures here so you got the motorcycle he says is made mostly out of a clamp with scrap cut and bent and bolted together nice and then he has what does he call this the quadruped latches springs and retaining clips and the dragon is mostly scrap welded together with wings cut on a water jet that is a tool i have not tried you have access to some good stuff man um, you know i wanted to make something like that for years now i thought it'd be cool to make a train i wanted to take like a spray can maybe a bit bigger than this put all kinds of metal on it and things like this so this would be the main body of a locomotive like one of those old big beastly greasy black <laughs> coal engines, you know, and uh, never got around it. I don't know if I ever will, but it'd be fun. I always thought, you know, take all this scrap and metal and everything and put it all together. But uh, I don't have so many wood or uh, metal working tools as I do woodworking. This one is from Rob Sanders and check it out. He made wooden mugs out of oak. So he says 15 strips of wood, six inches long, half inch thick, three quarters wide, and a 22 degree cut bevel on the inside, allowing them to go in a circle and then uh, epoxy to handle on. But that is nice, that must have taken a long time. You know, and how does it work? You know, I know oak is porous, but did you have any problems? He said you sealed the inside, but uh, yeah, wooden stuff, wooden bowls and cups, those are cool. Let's see, uh, this one's from Evan Roberts. He's got a few things. He made his own surround sound speakers. Um, he found an old TV, took the speakers out, and he made them specifically to fit somewhere in his house. And then he's also making a weather station clock. On the left, it will display the day of the week and the month. The time will be in the center and the temperature and humidity on the right. It's powered by an Adreno. Here's a clock I based the design off of. And the unique numbers in the clock are called Nixie tubes. 
That looks beautiful. I love the blue and the brass together. So let us know how yours turns out when you're done with it. This one, uh, let's see, Colin Stebbing. He's a professional photographer in Scotland. So he made these silhouette pin badges out of a couple different veneers and a plywood back. Uh, yeah, what are these called? These profile silhouettes. They have a name um, and it's escaping me now. But so he took the, um, look at this. He took the blueprints from the Hylian shield that we made through those in his laser cutter. And he made these little shields. He says they're 13 centimeters and 16 centimeters. And those came out just beautiful. It's nice that you didn't have to do all that by hand. So he's been schooling me a little bit on, on these laser burners. Um, he says, if you want a good one, you need a, a much more powerful one. And you're probably gonna be spending um, 4,000 um, pounds. That's British money. So that would be what? Maybe six or 7,000 US dollars on one. Because I know, because this thing will just do paper, not even super thick paper or cardboard, but uh, but yeah, that'd be nice to have, man. Save you a lot of time. It's a good job on those. Thanks for sharing that. And I'm sure I'll be asking you questions about burners. Here's one from Heidi, and she made these clay cats. So she sold a bunch. She's got an Etsy shop. Nice job. Here is, now there's not, let's see, you're, you just have your screen name, I guess. Geek Pro 117 made this shield. Great job. He didn't give any description on how he did it, but looks all right. Um, this one, I gotta go quick because my camera's gonna run out of footage here. Kaylee Emling, sorry about the, I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, your last name. She made a Velociraptor and glazed it, but check out these bowls, I love these. She calls them Dragon Scale Series, and those just look beautiful. Nice job on the glaze. Nice work, you should make some videos on how you do that. Um, here's one, Hunter Locke, and he sent it, let's see, he says he's been working on these for a couple years now. It's a costume making called Pepakira. 3D objects digitally unfolded onto uh, cardstock paper or foam. And Iron Man chest plate is what he made and the back plate. So he is doing this by hand, cutting it out and then hot gluing it all together and then putting like Bondo on the front to make it a solid piece. And also check it out, he's got his Daft Punk costumes and his sword there, I love it. He says he lit the uh, helmets with an LED strip. Good, good work. I hope you guys are making some uh, videos on how you do this, at least a few of you. This one's from Matthew Dikovich. He's in a trade center for school, so he's 3D printing uh, this little belt sander there, and he made a mold of his hand. You know, if you're in a shop class, I would have a hard time not doing some jokes with that, you know? Put a little fake blood on it and throw it on the <laughs> throw it by the table saw. That hand is creepy, creepy detailed, man. Nice job. So he sent uh, some blueprints for his lightsaber he made out of aluminum. Ah, nice. Nice work, man. And I wish I could spend more time on these, but let's see how many minutes we got. Not much. Okay, this one is from Jaron Higley. He said, love the videos. Here's a wood ring I made a few years back. And uh, looks like he made it maybe out of plywood. That's a different way to make the ring. It's nice. Um, let's see, Joey Rundall, check it out. A whirly gig. I've never made one, but I've always wanted to. So the wind blows the um, blades there. He said one of them broke off. And then the woodpecker pecks at the tree. And uh, he made it with his grandfather. Nice work. Those take a long time. You have to be, you know, because you're making sure everything is adjusted right. Good job. This one's from Sophie from Italy. She said she made this wood sword using uh, a wood saw, a fret saw, and my grandfather's rasp. For the sheaf, she used a long, narrow piece of fake leather and sewed it with her grandma's sewing machine. That's a good one, I like it. P.S. I'd like to try to make rings, but I can't find the veneer. I know, it's a pain. You can cut thin sheets of wood down, but uh, apparently in Europe, it's harder to find. Jean-Marc Beaulieu says, this is a jewelry box I made with nothing but hand tools. Except he said, I did use a drill for the dowels, but check it out. Nice, the wood is poplar and the exterior is oak. It almost looks like a coffin. Were you going for a coffin? <laughs> that looks good, I'm not sure how big it is. So let's see, if you got the pegs out, that's probably holding the necklace, so it's probably about at least that big, right? Maybe uh, 16 inches. Uh, this one is from Robert Navarro. Now check this out, when I first saw your pictures, Robert, and you said it was a dog feeding ball, I thought, what is, I, 
I had to laugh. I'm like, man, you way over engineered that. That is, but check it out. He says, it's a feeding station for our dog. We have a Great Dane. Well, there you go. Uh, apparently their food has to be elevated or, or they have stomach issues that could kill their uh, uh, their dog. Great Danes uh, need to eat higher up, I guess. But everything is uh, uh, pallet wood, but he used a kid's wood table for the top. Some nice bowls. That came out super nice. Thanks for sharing that. And, and I really like that you guys, I read everything you guys wrote, you know. I'm skipping it for this video, but um, thanks for, for giving me all the details. I love reading your guys' messages. This one's from Chris Parnoff, and he beat the snot out of a washer and made a metal ring out of it. So he made this also, he says he got it from the King of Random, but great job, man. Styro Slicer, yeah, I've never done anything like that. And it'd probably be pretty helpful for a lot of projects. Maybe later on we'll make one of those too and see how it turns out. Uh, Brandon Pham made his own headset holder. Let's see, out of aluminum and leather and foam for the pad. Nice custom, I like it. This one is from Marco Garcia and he made a wooden sword for my little brother using a hand plane and a Dremel tool. And he made, looks like he made also some letter cutouts there. Good job. Uh, let's see, hi Adam. William Cosson, a mini baseball bat on his uh, lathe. Cool. Uh, and let's see, Andre Goldstein made a Doctor Who, um, what are they, you called it a screwdriver prop. Is it called a screwdriver? I'm not sure what, I, I've seen the episode back when I was a kid in the old episode days, but I never knew what that was. But he says it extends, and uh, I'm not so familiar with that, but. And then the last one is Banali Muhammad from Algeria. He says, in my country, there's not much choices for wood and tools. I can't find pr spray primer cans anywhere. And we don't have the possibility to buy online. So check this out. He made this, he says it's from Kill La Kill. It's called a scissor blade. If you look, it's like half, if you took scissors and took it apart, it's like half of a, of a scissor. And you made a nice stand for it. That would be a fun, fun sword to make, man. That looks pretty intimidating. It's all red like that. So anyway, all right, we're gonna pick a winner here. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna have to dump the camera and then we'll pick a winner because it's just gonna cut off on me. All right, well, that was okay. I was able to eat some lunch as well, so that was kind of nice. All right, I'm gonna take all these, mix them up, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick the winner just in the middle of this little stack here. So I'll shuffle them around and pick a winner. And this will be for this uh, 50 veneer kit, this wood ID kit. And this is from Sarah's Veneers. Let me tell you a little bit about it in case you didn't see the last video. This is uh, 50 different species of wood and they're all labeled from wherever in the world they come uh, from. It's thin sheets and we were making wood rings out of this and they sent this um, as a giveaway for you guys. So that's very nice of them, but I'll put their information in the description below and then I'll pick a second and third place and they will get um, some strips of veneer that they can make, you guys can make wood rings out of, okay? So let me uh, mix it up. I won't look, we'll keep it fair. Everybody's entries here. All right, and I'll reach into the middle of the stack and we'll pull out winner number one. All right, Evan Roberts, congratulations, uh, buddy. That one's for you. And here's a ring kit for uh, Sophie, right? Sophie, there you go. Good luck on your ring, Sophie. Send me your address and I'll send it out. And this one. Uh, Huerto, and I got, I grabbed two, so I'll give you this one too. Angel, Huerto and Angel, congratulations. You guys got some ring kits. So you guys are awesome. Thanks for sharing all these videos. I know a lot of you have. Thanks for those who uh, also donated it with the support button through um, the Google support on the about. If you click that little blue one, and if you see anybody in the comment section who has a little heart next to their name and it says supported, they are somebody who uh, supported this channel. So you can thank them for that. Um, so yeah, when you send a donation, it changes your little name on the channel. Um, I think that's it. Keep sharing the videos and supporting the channel. The more viewers we get and subscribers, the more videos I can make. And uh, so, oh, by the way, all these templates are free in the description. So if you want to make a sword, you just go in the description of the video and you can print out all the 
plans for making things, and that's how it is with all the videos. So anyway, that'll do it, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.